Well, I've got a good word for you tonight. Hallelujah. <laughs> Holy Spirit working with us. Everybody say, thank you, Holy Spirit. You work with me. And uh, so let's just get into it. And uh, I'm just going to pick a, a few highlights, what the Spirit of God is laying on my heart of that message. You were supposed to get it this morning, and you didn't get it because of the prophetic move of the Spirit Yeah, this morning. Wasn't this morning just absolutely uh, incredible? Uh, but the Spirit of God works with us. And uh, so I want to start with that scripture in 2 Corinthians 6, verse 16. For we are the temple of the living God, just as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. We've been meditating on the scripture that says the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in and quickens my mortal body. Another scripture that says that Christ was raised by the glory of the Father. Hallelujah. So the glory has risen upon you. The glory has come. Hallelujah. And I prophesy the presence and the power of God is going to become evident on your life. Somebody say hallelujah. Now I want to speak this tonight about the Holy Spirit on us. Jesus said he'll be on you. He'll be in you. And we've been asking the question, then what is Holy Spirit doing in you? What is he doing in you? Just another burden for you to carry? Somebody to carry around? What is the Holy Spirit doing? Is he a silent observer? Is he, you know, just checking you out? No. The Bible says he's with you to be your helper. Oh, my God, what an anointing in this place here tonight. Come on, lift your hands and say, thank you, Holy Spirit. You are with me to be my helper. Hallelujah. Helper. And, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not a, uh, I'm not a uh, what's, what's, what's the word, a Greek scholar. But uh, I heard a uh, Greek scholar says that that word helper and I was expounding on that a little bit this morning at the Wentworth branch. How many of you are from Wentworth here tonight? Who's all of Wentworth? My God, look at all the people from Wentworth. Hallelujah. Good to see you here tonight. But that word helper, uh, help means to take hold together with against. That's what it means to help. When the Holy Spirit helps you, he takes hold together with you against. And I want to say to you today, your enemies are God's enemies. Can I say it again tonight? Your enemies are God's enemies. Uh, if you enter the fight, the Holy Ghost will take part of it with you. So he'll take part with you. Somebody say amen. So when the Bible says the Spirit of God is on you and he's your helper, he takes hold together with you against your enemy. And when the greater one is in you, let me tell you, the devil is in trouble. Somebody say hallelujah. The helper. Thank God for the helper. And so tonight I, I want to just talk a bit uh, about what he's come to help you. What has he come to do? He's come to be for you. Hallelujah. Everybody say, he is for me. Come on, lift your hand and say, thank you, Holy Spirit. You are with me, you are in me, and you are, are for me, and you are helping me. I declare tonight a week of divine, supernatural help in your life. Hallelujah. The heavens open over your life, the hand on you. You see, when the Spirit of God is on you, it's His hand that is on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When that anointing is on you, the supernatural has to follow. Signs, wonders, and miracles has to follow. Come on, I can sense the anointing yet tonight that this is going to be a week of the miraculous. This is going to be a week of divine interventions of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. I'm excited. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Expect the unexpected. Expect the Spirit of God to intervene. Somebody say amen. So what is he there to help you with? He's helping you to walk in the victory of Christ. Hallelujah. 
I often say this, when God says he gives you a double portion, the double portion is not double what you have today. What does scripture speak of when it speaks about the double portion? We know that throughout scripture in the Old Testament, the firstborn inherited a double portion. So the firstborn came into the inheritance of the father. So when the scripture speaks in the New Testament about you receiving a double portion, it speaks about you receiving the inheritance of Christ, which exceeds double what you have right now. All that God has prepared for you. Somebody say amen. He quickens you. The Spirit of God comes to quicken you, to illuminate you, to prepare you, to reveal to you the things that God has prepared for you. Come on, lift your hands and say, Lord, I'll walk in the things you have prepared. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not what you can imagine or you can think. You look back in your life today, I know myself. When I look back in my life today, I say, my God, I cannot recognize where I am today from the day that you saved me. Can somebody say hallelujah to God for that? Amen. And up even now. What you're experiencing is a smitten of what God has prepared for you. Hallelujah. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Hallelujah. So what has he come to do? The Holy Ghost is in you. He's with you. He's for you. And he's your helper. He's come to help. He's come to strengthen you. Now, when I'm, I'm just going to go a little bit further on, on what I did this morning. And look at what the Holy Spirit's come to help us with. What will this indwelling of the Spirit be? Jesus said, he will be like rivers of living waters flowing from the innermost being. Hallelujah. Like rivers of living waters flowing from the inside of you. John 7 verse 37, on the last day, on the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. For he who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living waters. Hallelujah. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him will receive. Hallelujah. So the Spirit of God is there, and He becomes a river of living waters flowing from the inside of you. I'm speaking tonight about the Spirit of prophecy flowing from the inside of you, the Spirit of revelation, the Holy Ghost quickening you till from the inside of you starts flowing divine revelations of things to come, declaring things that are not, hallelujah. By the Spirit you're speaking, and when you speak and you pray in the Spirit, it's news for you. You see, if you pray by the understanding, you will always pray by what you know. But when you pray by the Holy Ghost, out of your innermost being, rivers start flowing. Refreshing starts coming. Hallelujah. Revelation starts coming. And you find yourself speaking prophetically into your life. Oh, somebody thank the Holy Ghost that is in you. He's a river of refreshing, a river of revelation. So when you pray in the Spirit, you pray in the Spirit first. And tonight I want to challenge you that you need to switch things around. If prayer is a task for you, then it's because you're praying by the understanding. You're trying to work something. So what do you do? You pray in the Spirit. Till from the innermost being a river starts welling up. Hallelujah. And suddenly you pray by revelation. You are speaking mysteries, hallelujah. Things not known by the mind, things not understood in the natural, but inside the mysteries of the Spirit starts. And I'll tell you, when the Spirit of God starts speaking mysteries in your spirit and you start declaring them, hallelujah. As I said before, when you pray in the Spirit, you are praying mysteries, revelations of the Holy Ghost. Thank you for your enthusiasm. 
That's what starts happening on the inside of you. Where when you start praying, it's news for you. When the Spirit of God speaks, it's always by revelation. Remember, He's the Spirit of revelation. He will show you things to come. Hallelujah. He will show you what? Things to come. When you pray in the understanding, you're looking for religious order. You're trying to search. How was it? How has it been before? What is possible with other people? But when the Holy Ghost starts stirring in you, when from the innermost being starts flowing rivers of living waters, rivers of refreshing, rivers of blessing, from your innermost being, revelation starts popping from your lips, and you're declaring things that are not as though they were, and you're listening to yourself, and as the Spirit of God is speaking revelation, you are learning. That's how you learn the voice of God. Amen. That, that's where you get the leading of the Spirit from. Everybody lift your hands and say, Thank you, Holy Spirit, for rivers of refreshing that flows from my innermost being. A river, a river, a river, a river of revelation, a river of refreshing, a river of blessing flowing from the inside because the Spirit of the Lord is the Spirit of revelation. What does the Holy Ghost reveal? How does he start speaking to you? Look at another verse of Scripture, John 16, verse 13. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, man, I'm feeling excited. Yeah, man, I, my God, what an awesome time this is here tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Shabro. Listen, the Holy Ghost is never out of answers. Amen. I, I've had people come to me and say, Pastor, I don't know what to do next. Pray in the Spirit. Let the river start flowing from the innermost being. Hallelujah. Start prophesying in the anointing. That's, that's when the Spirit of God starts speaking and you actually speak in tongues and then you start interpreting your tongue. Let him who speaks in the tongue interpret that tongue. Hallelujah. The first manifestation of divine mysteries is a tongue. I want to remind you tonight, it is the one gift of the Spirit unique to the New Testament. Hello? The speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God teaching you what you would say. Because the voice of the Spirit is supernatural. It doesn't come by the mind. It doesn't come by understanding. It doesn't come by analysis. It comes by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Come on, just lay your, your, your hands on your spirit tonight. Let your spirit be quickened. Let your spirit that is the candle of the Lord be illuminated tonight. Hallelujah. 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 He quickens you. Not, not only your body, he quickens your soul. Amen. Now, now, look at this with me, and, and I think I have to close with this. Uh, I almost didn't leave enough time for it. Look, look at John 16, verse 13. What does the Holy Ghost come to do? You see, we perish for lack of vision. You perish if there's no revelation, progressive revelation of what God has prepared for you. Because when you walk in the Spirit by what God has prepared for you, the natural things become nothing. They become mere stepping stones because there's a revelation. There's an anointing that's been released. There, there's, there's, a, there's a manifestation of the Spirit that has come to your spirit. Amen. Are you there? John 16, 13. However, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. Oh, Shabane ke sabronde. The Spirit of God will reveal to you things to come. He's not speaking here about showing you when the Antichrist is coming. 
The Holy Ghost doesn't reveal unrelated things to you. Oh, thank you very much for your enthusiasm. When the Holy Ghost shows you things to come, he's showing you things to come concerning you. Why? So you don't walk in darkness. So that you walk in light. Hallelujah. You walk in revelation. You walk in understanding. When he shows you things to come and things start happening, it's already old news. You've been there. You've seen that. Hallelujah. So what does Jesus say the Holy Spirit will do? He will show you things to come. Man, when, when you, you feel so powerful when that happens. When, when that anointing comes to you, you start feeling like a giant slayer. I, sometimes when I'm prophesying, speaking the Spirit, and start the rivers start flowing, the revelation, the Spirit starts showing things to come, you feel like a giant. Have you ever felt like that in the spirit? You know, you open your eyes because you think your head's going to hit the ceiling now. You start feeling groot. Amen. At times I look and it feels like my hands are these huge hands. I check just to make sure because in the spirit something's busy happening to me. I prophesy transformation comes to you. Hallelujah. When the Spirit of God is on you, He anoints you to be a giant slayer. Because the greater one is in you. Greater than what? Greater than the world. Greater than Satan. Greater than the weapons formed against you. Greater than any devil that's come against you. Greater. I think that's why I feel big sometimes when I pray in the Spirit. Hallelujah. How many of you experience that? Isn't that an incredible feeling? Amen. But he says here, yeah, he will tell you things to come. So what, what does that mean? It means that he shows, he starts bringing revelation to you. Things that eyes not seen, ears not heard. He starts, he starts directing your path. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A Christian should never be without direction. The worst time to start seeking God for direction is if you're not prepared for it at all. Because then you'll be at the mercy of every other person's opinion. You'll be at the mercy of everybody else's thoughts about what you should do. And you're walking around like you're blind, but there's a light in you. I prophesy tonight, I release the Spirit of God to quicken you tonight. Hallelujah. When he shows you things to come, what does Holy Spirit do? Despite what you're going through, he illuminates the promises of God. He shows you what God has promised you. He shows you the inheritance that you have in Christ so that your faith can grab a hold of it. Hallelujah. And when your faith grabs, you see, the Holy Spirit's never going to show you what a what a how poor you are, how terrible you are. I, I knew this one lady, she was constantly praying. And uh, I thought to myself, what a mighty woman of prayer. I mean, I was a young Christian. Whenever I meet her, she's praying. Where were you? I tried to phone you. No, I pray. What you praying? Well, I'm praying from 2 in the morning. She's praying. Then you phone her afternoon. She's praying. And I thought, my God, what a prayer warrior. And, man, Lord, help me to pray that much. And uh, so the one day we we in a prayer meeting, and thank God, here's this woman. And I thought to myself, at last, I'm going to hear this woman pray. And we get together, and uh, I purposely ask her to pray. And she starts praying. And this is her prayer. Oh, Lord, you see how hard it is for us. Oh, and the, oh, you see how Jimmy did that to me, and that one did that to me. I looked at so what a waste of prayer time. Your prayer is not a time for pity parties. 
You pray is a time for the Spirit of God to well up within you to become a river of life, hallelujah, and refreshing and blessing. And the Spirit of God started showing you things to come, revealing His purposes and His plans. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. He will show you things to come. When He does, when the Spirit of God starts speaking, what is he doing? He's releasing words of faith. Remember that when the Spirit of God speaks, he's speaking by revelation. He's speaking faith. He's a faith God. And that word has to be grabbed by the Spirit. I think most Christians walk in defeat because they don't spend time to grab that word. To grab that revelation. To grab what the Spirit of God is saying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that when that enemy comes against you, say to him, I'm coming against you in the name of the Lord of hosts, whom you have defied. I already saw the victory. I already know what God has planned for my life. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, I declare tonight, not one of you are going to be a victim. Hallelujah. Something about the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost comes on you, become violent. I don't know about you, but I, I kind of, I become vus. Amen. When the spirit of revelation rests on me. Amen. 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 Sometimes I have to watch myself. My wife says, calm down, John. Amen. Because something's happening on the inside of me. Jesus said he will show you things to come. Come on, lift your hands. Start thanking him. Thank you, Spirit of God. Out of your innermost being shall flow rivers of revelation, rivers of refreshing, rivers of blessing, and he will reveal to you things to come. Come on, just thank the Holy Ghost tonight. I release a spirit of strength and revelation in you tonight. If there's anything the enemy uses very effectively against us, is make sure you don't have enough time to spend in the spirit. Come on, just pray in the Holy Ghost a little bit. Thank the Holy Ghost. I, I activate you in the spirit of revelation tonight. And I thank you, Spirit of God, that tonight even you reveal things to come. Even as each and every one's heart is open to you, there's the quickening of the Holy Ghost, the power of your spirit that comes to them. In the name of Jesus, I bless them. I thank for revelation. I thank you for insight. I thank you for the quickening of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You show us things to come. You're the spirit of promise. You reveal the promise of God. You reveal the inheritance. You reveal the things prepared for those who love you, my God. I bless this church tonight. I thank you for a prophetic anointing. Hallelujah. For anointing for your church to stand in a prophetic place and make declarations. I bless you. In the name of Jesus, Spirit of God. Come on, just receive tonight. There's a spirit of revelation. A spirit of things to come. And let boldness into your heart to declare them. To make them known. To manifest them by, by your words. I bless your servants tonight. I thank for a week of the miraculous, a week of the glory of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Blessed be your name, O Spirit of God. I thank you, your Spirit comes mightily on each and every one here tonight. And I declare there shall be advance, there shall be increase. No man shall be able to stand before you. No darkness will be able to keep you. But the light and the revelation of my spirit will rest upon you. And you will walk in light. You will walk in the demonstrations of the things already revealed. For I have called you even at this time to be a prophetic people. To be a people who know their God. And has experienced and tasted of the things that I have prepared and I bless your saints tonight. I thank you, Lord. Thank you tonight for the saturation of your spirit on every life. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what I hear the Spirit of God saying? He's going to start waking you up all hours of the morning. How many of you are going to give him permission to wake you up? Come on, just lift your hands and say, yes, Holy Ghost, wake me up. Now, in the name of Jesus, keep your hands raised. You're making covenant with him tonight. When he wakes you up, you're going to go pray. You're not going to try and sleep. You're not going to convince yourself, I'm still tired. You're not going to convince yourself. Listen, in the times, in the presence of the Lord is times of refreshing. I'm going to declare that to you tonight. In the name of Jesus, he wakes you up two o'clock in the morning, go pray. Hallelujah. Go pray in the Holy Ghost. Go pray in the Spirit. Prepare yourself. Ah. Hallelujah. Ah, that's one of the great things to learn, to be led of the Holy Ghost. I started to learn that. It, you know, in the beginning, I used to argue. I said, God, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. Surely I need my sleep. Especially you only got to bed at 1. And he wakes you up at 2. But whatever it is, he knows what you need. Hallelujah. I release that anointing on you. And tonight, you have made a covenant with God that when he wakes you up, you're going to pray. You're going to pray in the spirit. So how do you do it? You get into the, you wake up in the morning. You get into a place where you can be private. You don't have to wake your wife up. You don't have to wake your family up get to a place where it can be you and God. Start lifting your hands and worshiping Him, honoring Him, thanking Him, praying in the Spirit, and then praying in the understanding. Hallelujah. And I, I see tonight revelation, open doors, comes to your life in the name of Jesus. What an anointing, what a presence of God. Let the mantle of God fall on your life. Let the spirit of prophecy, the spirit of revelation come on you tonight in the name of Jesus. For there will be advance and there will be much increase and supernatural strengthening by my spirit shall come upon you, says the Lord. You will no longer be defeated. You will no longer be held captive. But by the spirit you will be prophetically placed supernaturally positioned according to my promise and my purpose for your life. I bless your church in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. I let you in behind the veil a bit tonight. Is that okay with you tonight? Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Man, I, I feel like there's fire in me here tonight. I, I feel like, oh my, are my eyes burning? What's happening here tonight? The Spirit of God is on you for good. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Now, isn't that what the Spirit of God said earlier on? The Spirit of Mike. Lift your hands one more time and thank Him. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You're the Spirit of might that rests on each and every one here tonight. Thank you that by your Spirit, they prophesy. By your Spirit, we declare things to come. You reveal them. You bless them. I thank for your anointing on each footstep in the name of Jesus. I declare of you the success of the Holy Ghost. And everybody said, Amen and Amen.